What's up guys? Today we've got another soundbar to check out. This one a lot of you guys have been requesting. This is Samsung's new flagship. This is the Q990B. So shout out to Robert for sending this over for me to review. Thanks Robert. If you guys would like to pick up this soundbar or any Samsung soundbar or any soundbar in general, visit valueelectronics.com. So on the very top is the soundbar by itself. These look like the rear speakers. Here we've got the power cords for the back speakers. And then the back speakers themselves, we have two of these. And inside the accessories box, we get the instructions, two power cords, HDMI cable, wall mounting brackets for the sound bar, batteries for the remote control, and the remote control. And then the last piece is the subwoofer. It's not that big of a subwoofer. Measurement wise, this is nine inches wide by 16 inches tall by 16 inches deep. So it's not that big. It's a ported subwoofer. So you have the port in the back and then also on the back we have the power cord inlet, pairing button, and then we have a USB service port. And this is a side firing subwoofer. So the driver is located on the side. Here are the surround speakers, the back speakers. There is a driver up front. There's also a driver on the top. So one up top, one in the front. There's also another driver on the back. So all together, there are three drivers per speaker. On the back of each speaker, you have a wall mount point. You have the pairing button. And then you have the standby indicator and link indicator as well. And on the bottom is the power cord inlet, which you can snake the power cord out of the back if you're gonna place this on a stand. So here we've got the sound bar. Let's take a quick peek under the bottom of the sound bar. This is where the connections are. So on the bottom, we've got two HDMI ins and there's also an HDMI output as well. And this will support HDR10 plus and HDR10 as well as ARC. There's a USB service port on the bottom and then the optical output is also located on the very far end. And on the opposite end, you get the power inlet. Here we've got the selection button. We've got the volume down volume up and then we got the mute button this is an 11.1.4 soundbar okay so together there are three up front two in the sides and then there's also two in the top and then each of the surround speakers has three speakers in each one as well size wise this measures 48 inches wide by three inches tall by five inches in depth so it should fit a 65 inch television pretty nicely or if you want to pair it up with like a 75 or 85 inch, it is going to be a little bit smaller than that. Okay, so this does support Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. This is a completely wireless system except for the power cords. So the back speakers are wireless and the subwoofer is wireless. Again, except for the power cords, which do have to be plugged in. So let's go ahead, get this thing set up and I'll give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm going to be hooking up the soundbar through its HDMI EARC input into the TV's EARC. The subwoofer is in the front left corner of the room and both surround speakers are behind my chair on stands. Be sure you leave a few feet from the side of the surrounds so that the side firing speakers aren't blocked by the wall. I'm also going to place the soundbar directly underneath my TV. If your surround speakers have a blinking blue light, you'll have to hold down the ID set button for 5 seconds and hold up on the remote control till the light turns solid blue. If you have the same blinking light on the subwoofer, just follow those same steps and it'll connect. Let's have a quick look at the settings. The bar's got an auto EQ function which will calibrate the subwoofer's bass. Space fit will optimize the sound according to your space. AVA will listen to the background noise and adjust the dialogue to keep it clear. There's voice enhance, a night mode, sync delay adjustment, and a surround mode which you can specify if you have the surround speaker sucked up or just the fronts. There's a bass and treble control and four sound presets. There's standard mode, which does not upmix, while adaptive sound, surround, game pro, all upmix to 11.1.4. Now by holding down the settings button on the remote, you can access the seven band EQ. It's got 150, 300, 600 Hertz, 1.2K, 2.5, 5, and 10K. You can adjust the levels for the center, side, wide, front top, rear, rear side, and rear top. You can go from a negative six to a plus six. The subwoofer can also be adjusted from a negative 12 to a plus six.
The first demo we're going to check out is the channel callouts on the DTSX demo disc. This will let you hear exactly how discrete the channel separation is. Left front, right front, center, left side surround, right side surround, left rear, right rear, left front height, right front height, left rear height, right rear height. Well, the left center and right channels were clearly separated. The top left and right channel sounded pretty convincing as well. It's almost as if the voice was floating between the middle of the TV and the ceiling, so it isn't perfect. The back left and back right speakers were perfect, but the top left and top right sounded very much similar to the front tops, so the voices floated between the ceiling and the top of the speakers. The side channel callouts was impressive and sounded like they were a few feet to the sides of my chair. Next I threw on the helicopter demo off the Dolby Atmos demo disc. For this demo, you're supposed to hear the helicopter move counterclockwise above your head. I got a very slight sensation that the effects were coming above me, but it did sound more like it was coming from the lower channels, although the sound movement was nearly perfect when it was circling around the room. The next one we're going to check out is the Leaf demo in Dolby Atmos. In this demo, you should hear the leaf falling from the top left speaker till it floats all the way around behind you. This demo was far more convincing than the other one, and the detail was so good I actually heard the leaf float above and behind my head. The insect sounds were clearly defined, and the soundstage was a lot bigger than what I was expecting from that small soundbar. Next I wanted to see how good the upmixing worked, so put it on surround mode and adaptive sound. This will take the 7 channel soundtrack and mix it up to 11.1.4. In comparison to listening to the straight 7.1 mix on the 990B, putting it in surround mode expands the sound stage tremendously outwards and upwards. When switching over to the adaptive sound, things got a little louder with the bass juiced up a bit more, but I felt that it made the subwoofer sound too boomy for my taste and it sounded like it was driving the sub too hard, so I did keep it on surround mode for most of the time. I know a lot of soundbars can struggle with center channel intelligibility, but this one remained solid whether it was a quiet dialogue driven scene or when people were talking during big action moments. On other soundbars I've tested, the center channel can sometimes get drowned out during the action scenes and then come back to life when things die down. I didn't get any of that on the Samsung, it remained at a constant level at all times. Now of course given the small size of these speakers, voices can sound thin at times and even a little hollow, and the louder you push the bar, channel separation starts sounding more like it's coming from the bar itself. So in turn you have a very long center channel. That's always been a shortcoming with soundbars by trying to pack in so many speakers in a small enclosure, so try not to get too crazy with the volume or else channel separation is going to suffer. At the time of this video, the Q990B is selling for $18.99, although it might be on sale. One issue that popped up from time to time is that the subwoofer would disconnect occasionally. 
I kept it away from any routers, so I'm not sure what the issue could have been, though I never had this issue with any of the surround speakers. That being said, I thought the subwoofer was a little bloated, but I felt it blended in well with the system as a whole. The high channel effects could be hit and miss, but I thought the upper atmospheric effects was always a noticeable presence with well-mixed soundtracks. The lower channel surround development was very convincing, and channel movement was seamless. As I mentioned earlier, you'll want to give space around the side of the surround speaker so you don't block those side drivers, otherwise you're not going to get any side channel effects. One thing I would like to see in next year's version are longer power cords, especially for the surround speakers. 5 feet just isn't enough. That being said, this is another very good soundbar from Samsung. No, it's not going to outperform having separate speakers and a receiver. It's for those folks that want to keep it simple and not have a ton of speakers all around their living rooms. This is a simple home theater in a box soundbar system that's easy to set up and it'll give you a big theater experience at home. So what are your thoughts on the Samsung 990B? Have you heard it and are you going to pick one up? Leave a comment down below and let us know. Now if you do want to grab one of these, I'll leave links for it down below in the video's description. Or if you want to see one in person, you can always visit Value Electronics or give them a call. Just let them know that we sent you. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.